Hi there. This video will showcase the Stable Diffusion plugin for Unreal Engine and some potential use cases for this tool. In this video, we will go through the installation process, some precautions for using the plugin, the possibilities of creating a workflow using this tool, and review some generated examples to explore the strength and weakness of the plugin in its current state. The plugin is built for Unreal 5.1 and requires an NVIDIA GPU with at least 6 GB of VRAM to run the editor and Stable Diffusion together. To install the plugin, first navigate to the releases page of the plugin on GitHub. You can find the link in the description. Download the plugin only version of the latest release of the plugin. Once the download is complete, extract the folder from the zip, and we will come back to it later. In order to add plugins to Unreal, we first need to create a plugins folder in our Unreal project directory. Create a new folder and name it plugins. Next, drag and drop the Stable Diffusion Tools folder into the plugins folder we just created. This will allow us to see the plugin in Unreal. Remember to make sure the plugin is enabled. You can double check by clicking Edit Plugins. Once the plugin browser is open, you should see the Stable Diffusion Tools plugin enabled under the Installed tab. Now when we open Unreal, we should see the Diffusion Tools UI under the Windows tab. Open the plugin UI and click on Open Dependencies Installer under the Tool Windows. Select Clean Install and update all dependencies. This will take a while if you are doing this for the first time. Wait for the dependencies to install and restart the editor once finished. Once the editor boots up again, the plugin should be ready to use. The tool supports both image-to-image -image generation using the viewport as reference, as well as batch video frames processing using the level sequencer. In the plugin UI, we can set the model, pipeline, LoRa, and textual inversion we wish to use. The pipeline section here mainly allows us to use control nets. Down here we have the tuning parameters for stable diffusion, similar to the web UI version. The plugin also has a built-in upscaler and export options. You can read more about tuning parameters and prompting guides in the documentation. Something to keep in mind is the outsize. The plugin shows a preview of what portion of the viewport will be captured as reference. It's best practice to resize the viewport to be larger than the size of the output, so you are aware of what is in frame and what is being cropped out. Another thing to check before starting is to turn off real-time rendering in the viewport options here. This could speed up image generation and reduce the chances of the editor crashing. To add custom models, we can navigate to the tool windows and click on Open Model Tools. This will open up Civit AI in the editor directly, allowing us to browse and download models directly. Click Download to Unreal and wait for the download to complete. Once the process is over, we will be able to switch between different models under the Model Preset tab. One way to use the plugin is to take advantage of how easily we can pull up assets and build reference scenes in game engines like Unreal. Let's say I need a concept art of a cartoon-style Viking town, and I need the image to have certain subjects or use a specific camera angle. This is where I can pull up resources from the Unreal Marketplace and use asset packs like this one here to quickly block out a reference scene. These asset packs usually come with well-put-together demo maps, we can edit the orientation of any objects on the map and create our desired composition. After creating the scene, we can proceed to image generation. Since I want a cartoon-styled image, I will use this Disney Pixar model. Next, I want the image to follow the composition of the reference, so I'm going to add the canny control net as well. Note that if we want to add control nets, we must first change the pipeline to control net image to image, and then add the corresponding control net layer processor under the layers tab. I can also use a LoRa trained on buildings and sceneries here to refine the image, but I will leave it empty for now. In the Generation Options area, since we are using Control Net, I'm going to set the strength at a high value somewhere above 0.7. This will give the model more generative freedom under Control Net. Next, we can add prompts to further describe what kind of image we want. I have some pre-written prompts, and I will simply copy and paste them onto here. Here I want to mention that the tool will reset all parameters and prompt settings to default every time it is closed. Therefore, if you are writing a lot of prompts, it is best practice to copy them and save it somewhere outside of the project. It will make loading prompts much easier. Since I am using text prompts, I will also increase the guidance scale a little, so the prompts are more closely followed. Once satisfied with the settings, hit Generate Image and wait for the result. 
the generation process is logged to the editor console, you can check here to see the progress and any issues. The result came out pretty good, and we can see a change from 3D to 2D style from the reference capture. We could also use simple meshes to block out a general composition of a desired output. In other words, text prompts describe what things should look like in the scene, and the meshes allow the model to know where these things should be. Take this scene for example. The buildings in the background suggest the shapes and orientation of these buildings, but not how they look. We can use text prompts and LoRa's to influence their appearance. To generate an image in this case, I will remove any control net and allow the model more freedom to fill in the details on those buildings. If we used control net, it would retain the monochromatic color on the primitive meshes, and the result wouldn't be very interesting. After control net is removed, only the strength dictates how closely the generated image resembles the reference. Therefore, I usually use a lower strength value between 0.6 to 0.7 to limit the model to generate details on the existing compositions of the building. As you can see in the results, at 0.6 strength, the buildings followed the general shape of the reference, but turned out paler due to the color of the meshes. Compared to at 0.7 strength, the buildings looked more interesting but had a more random orientation. Using these methods, we can easily combine assets to create a guideline for the plugin to capture the composition, color, and lighting of our reference and transform the scene into our desired style. This is particularly useful for generating a sequence of images that can be used as a storyboard or to describe the tone of an environment. We can take a look at this storyboard sequence here as an example. A story was first drafted in Celtext with all the camera shots planned. Images are generated strictly using ControlNet Open Pose. Open Pose provides a solution to generate dynamic character poses using a stick figure that describes the orientation of the character's body, which are usually difficult to achieve using only text prompts. For this sequence, I use the same generation settings and reference the same art styles for each image using text prompts. For each image, I would change some of the prompts to describe the different environments. I would also change the camera angle and pose the character to describe the placement of the character relative to the scene. In some of these generations, we can see the model have trouble drawing detailed faces and hands, which is a common issue with the base 1.5 model. The model also had trouble putting objects into the character's hand. In many cases, the model was asked to put a glowing stopwatch in the character's hand, but as the prompt gets longer, these descriptions about details get lost in the generation process. Another challenge is the base open pose control net in this plugin has trouble recognizing which direction the character is facing. Even with prompts such as back of character or character looking away from camera, the result is mostly random. However, even with these challenges, we were able to quickly generate a storyboard with consistent art style and a high degree of completion, which would normally take much longer.